Today I want to talk to you about Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio and my official pick for Game of the Year. Man this thing is chock full of flavour. Every single character and district just oozes its own unique charm and style, and a lot of that flavour ties into the main narrative, which is actually incredibly well written and way more complex and interesting than I was expecting. But if you're coming into this one fresh and you've never played a Jet Set Radio game before, then it's going to be worth going over the systems before I start raving about the story and locations. Essentially, we're going to be skating around a very beautiful city, doing sick tricks and platforming, tagging the town with graffiti, and sometimes doing races and combat challenges. So we start things out here, in jail. Oh dear. Luckily, this lad Trice busts us out and wants us to join his crew, and we get straight into a tutorial, learning all the basics of skating, tagging, parkour, and whatnot. The first thing you'll notice is the movement is very snappy and responsive, and all the controls are super fine tuned, so exploring feels nice and breezy. We even get a little combat practice because when we get outside, we end up brawling with the police. And this here is the most noticeable difference between Bomb Rush and Jet Set. Back in Tokyo 2, we were never fighting. Sometimes you would spray the police with graffiti to distract them and then run away, but here we're doing full on capoeira kicks and juggling our foes into the air. The game also has a distinct 80s sci-fi anime vibe and so we're fighting futuristic cops on jetpacks, attack helicopters, huge mechs, all sorts of stuff. The fighting system isn't anything deep or complex, but nor would I particularly want it to be. It reminds me a lot of those 6th gen brawlers where you just rush at the enemy and bash them about, and seeing as this game's going for that 6th gen feel, it makes a lot of sense and it feels like a natural fit. Anyway, once we're done battling, we get onto the rooftops to make our escape, and then we get decapitated by DJ Cyber, one of the most dripped out individuals to ever grace a video game. And that's our intro. Head cut clean off, so now we got this snazzy red robot head and we're looking to take over the city with our crew and get some answers about what happened to us. But there's all sorts of ghost in the shell tech twists and turns about memory and identity and also the police chief looks like Dr. Robotnik, which I really appreciate. But I don't want to spoil any of that story for you, so I'll leave it there and we'll move on to that sweet, sweet vibe. We start out at the hideout. And if you are an avid Jet Set fan, then you might recognise the layout here, since it is paying massive homage to the GG's base in Jet Set Radio Future. There is just an awesome hangout energy throughout the whole place, from the many couches and speakers dotted about, to the non-specific game consoles that they play on the top floor. Here you can practice all your graffiti skills and your skating moves. You can also switch up between rollerblades, skateboard and BMX, which is largely a cosmetic change, but you will encounter areas as you explore that need a certain vehicle to access. For instance, skates break through glass on the floor, but BMXs can open garage doors. As you complete missions and challenges working your way through the main story, you'll start to see your hideout fill up with folks you've recruited, which is a great little detail that I genuinely adore. Strolling around your hideout, seeing your friends chilling on the sofas, dancing about or vibing up on a ledge makes the place feel really lived in and welcoming. You can also switch between all the characters you've unlocked at any time. Unlike Jet Set, there's no stats system in this one so it is only a visual change, but I'm still sure everyone's going to have their favourites. Once you start exploring the city and its many districts, you'll probably be struck by just how much current attention went into every little detail. I haven't done this much virtual tourism since Station Square back when Sonic Adventure first dropped. It's a joy to go around sightseeing, from the little market stalls to the big curry shop to the old frog coffee. We got indoors, outdoors, rooftops, underground, even super secret hidden areas. Chilling in the basketball court, watching this dude fix up the boat, flexing on the low poly girls down at the mall. Each borough has its own particular ambiance too. We got the big city living of Millennium Square where DJ Cyber has his record label. It's a wide open space with a very clean vibe and lots of opportunities to jump into office complexes by smashing the windows or using your big flippy parkour jumps to get onto the rooftops and run around like a ninja. We also have the Neon Knights of Matan with the huge devotional statues everywhere. This is one of the biggest areas of the game and I found it pretty easy to get lost, but every twist and turn has a story to tell. From these poor dudes who've gotten into a fender bender on the highway to solid snaking through this vent and finding a cosy little hideout. Then we have the impractically skate parked out Pyramid Island with its big industrial dockyard vibes. 
Easily the trickiest area of the game, I think, because getting to those upper areas requires working out which combination of rails to grind, and it all gets very puzzly. But it looks cool as hell, and I'm always down for a dockyard area in games. Speaking of dockyards, it isn't Shenmue exactly. There's plenty of variety here, but we're not going to be pulling drawers, examining items and asking the locals where sailors are. But New Amsterdam is still full of locations that you'll want to explore, and the pacing of the game encourages you to do just that. The prefectures in the original jet set were all gorgeous, but the constant presence of the timer, along with the general arcadey pace of the whole thing, stopped it from being as chill as it could have been. Whereas now, we have some incentives to explore for fun and profit. We have our very 2000s mobile phone where we can change the soundtrack and play mini games, but also get texts from our friends. And often said friends will say things like, meet me in the warehouse, or I'm chilling in the underground bazaar. And if you haven't found that particular spot yet, then it's time to get to mosey and find it. I should circle back for a moment because I mentioned how you can switch up the soundtrack on your phone, and since music is a huge part of any Jet Set experience, we should dine out on that for just a minute. Now, crucially, Hideki Naganuma, the dude responsible for the Jet Set beats, did come back here and give us a few tunes. He didn't curate the whole soundtrack, but just having him here does feel very authentic, and the tunes he composed for this definitely hit the right spot. On the whole, this soundtrack is a lot more varied than the original Jet Set. We have plenty of dancey hip-hop beats, but we also have straight-up electro-funk tunes, as well as K-pop, and even some UK grime stuff, which was very unexpected. Purists might be disappointed that Naganuma didn't just do the whole thing, but I personally love this soundtrack. It fits with the feel of the game, and the eclectic mix of tunes stops it from ever getting boring. New Amsterdam is a city where Dreamcast nostalgia still lives large, and I suggest you pay it a visit very soon. But wait, there's more! Yeah, so I was going to end the video there, had the script all written and recorded and whatnot and felt pretty good about it, when Sega themselves decided to announce a whole bunch of stuff, including a brand new Jet Set Radio game. Absolute mad lads. Now, I've got a feeling that Sega's decision to go back and revise a bunch of beloved IPs is definitely something that we'll be discussing over the course of the next year or so. But for now, all we have is this initial trailer, so let's take a quick look before we wrap up here. We are working with limited early footage, of course, but I'd recognise my boy Beat anywhere, even if he has switched up his style a little bit. And of course, the man himself, Professor K, is back on the decks and presumably here to narrate our adventures too. All that we can really determine from these clips is that the gameplay will hopefully return the original beats of skating, spraying and platforming, but beyond that it's really tough to tell much about how the game's going to shake out. The art style is no longer cel shaded, which is a bit of a shame, but it also isn't hyper realistic, so it's still got kind of a stylized vibe to it. The character models are likewise updated, but instantly recognisable, so I have no strong opinions on that either. I guess the jury's out on this one for me at the moment. I'm always happy to have more Jet Set in my life, but right now, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is the one to beat. So if Sega are planning to make a comeback and try to reclaim that Dreamcast high of the late 90s, then they'd best not miss. And only time's gonna tell on that, I suppose. Nonetheless, an exciting time to be a Sega fan, and an exciting time to be a Dreamcast enjoyer. That is all for today, folks. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please be sure to hit all those YouTube buttons and maybe leave me a nice comment. If you're feeling super generous, you could always take a look at the Patreon. And even if you just have a Dreamcast obsessed friend in real life, you could recommend the channel to them. Any and all support is always much appreciated, and until next time, folks, Happy New Year!